Hey everybody, Brett from Stardews Gaming here, back with another first look video. Today we're checking out Dungeon Rats, which is uh, a old school RPG, you know, party based, turn based combat. You guys, you know, you probably know the type, but uh, it's made by the same people that made um, Age of Decadence, which is a very, very similar game. I believe they're actually set in the same world, but uh, this one allows you to build a party, whereas in Age of Decadence you're running. Uh, solo the whole time uh, with very few exceptions, but uh, I picked up both games on a GOG sale not too long ago, and I actually really enjoyed Age of Decadence. I haven't beaten it yet, but I've gotten pretty far into it, and uh, I like it quite a bit, although it's really unforgiving and really, um, it's definitely old school in the sense that it's not going to hold your hand through anything. There's a lot of ways to accomplish different tasks, and they may not always be apparent, and so you can sit there and kind of beat your head against it and then realize, oh, I was doing this the hard way. And this game is the same, it's just allowing you to do it with a party. Um, so today we're checking out Dungeon Rats. If you guys would like, we can check out Age of Decadence as well. But um, seeing as how I've already played through that, I wanted to give this a shot first, because I do like party-based games a little bit more. I like managing the whole group rather than just one character. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into a new game. And uh, let's see, the difficulty mode affects your enemies to hit chance only. Uh, low to hit chance will force your enemies to use less damaging attacks that don't have any uh, hit chance penalties. Number of enemies, their stats, skills, and hit points remain the same. Um, I'm gonna go on... let's do Tough Bastard. We'll give them a very minor penalty. I don't think I'm ready for like any of this. Um, it looks like you can also disable companions if you want to run it solo like Age of Decadence. That's... I don't know. I don't think I would enjoy that. Alright, so we're jumping into the character creation screen. Um, I am going to do my best to explain the lore while we're kind of going through this. Basically, the world that this is set in, and it's the same for Age of Decadence as far as I know, um, is like this. It's supposed to be post-apocalyptic, but it's very like Roman, so it's sort of like this weird mystical apocalypse, like gods fighting, sort of like a Ragnarok type thing happening. Um, on, I don't know if it's supposed to be Earth, it could be, you know, a different, like, fantasy world, but, um, basically, they're in sort of like a Roman era, um, everything looks very, very Roman, but the gods, you know, have this big war, and, uh, the world essentially ended, so it's post-apocalyptic in the sense that society is very broken and fractured, and, um, you know, basically outside of the cities, it's complete wasteland, but uh, inside the cities, it looks very Roman. So I'm going to stick with the basic portrait here, but I'll go through a couple of them so you guys can see what they look like. Um, I like the just generic hooded face. One issue I have with games like this is they give you portraits, but the portraits never match up to what the characters that you create. And so something sort of like vague and mysterious like this works for me because then I don't have to match the face that well. Um, you got all different types of skin tones. And let's see, faces. It looks like you can get some like some like Pictish style war paint or something. I'll probably just go with a generic face. Let's see, hair. Not a huge fan of any of those really. I guess I'll just do the generic one again. And uh, let's go with like brown. And yeah, let's give him a beard. I'll go through all of them so you guys can see him, but I like the beard. There we go. Alright, so I like running warrior characters. I'm going to sort of build uh, my character in that same vein. Um, I'm going to rename him Astartes, just so we're not using like a super generic name. There's also, you, you can go female if you want. Uh, actually, here, let's go through their portraits as well. Looks like you got pretty much like the same selection. You got like a generic hooded face and then like every like racial background you can think of. So let's go with that. And it looks like it kept my... Well, it kept the beard. It changed the hair, though. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go like seven strength, I think. And then I want high constitution because I'm gonna try to be a tanky character. So we'll go like seven strength, nine constitution, and then I'll split the remaining points somewhat equally among these. I'll probably do more emphasis on intelligence. So maybe like seven intelligence. We'll do like five dexterity. Hmm. I think I'll go like six and six, something like that. 
Right, so for skills, you don't really want to diversify these too much, at least when you're creating your character. Basically, in this game, you want to be really, really good at what you do. Because if you're only so-so at a bunch of different things, you're just going to fail at all those things. So you need to be good at one thing, and then slowly build the others. Um, so I'm probably just going to go sword and board here. So let's go like, I don't know, try to get that to four. And then we want our block skill to be pretty high. So something like that would be good. Um, dodging doesn't really come into play if you've got a shield. It, it can, but it depends on the shield and your skill with it. Um, basically, shields and armor give you dodge penalties if they're heavy. And so if your you know, spec is a tank, your dodge is pretty much going to be non-existent anyway. So putting dodge skill in is sort of redundant. Just a waste of points. Um, let's get some critical strike. That seems like a good idea. And that leaves us with 30 points to sort of play around with. Um, I guess I could drop another one into block and then maybe do alchemy a little bit. I know... I, I've played like five minutes of this game and I know that there's a lot of harvestables that require alchemy. But at the same time, having like a ranged alternative to our primary weapon wouldn't be a terrible idea either. Hmm. Let's, let's get to block 5. That seems like a good idea. And then I'll go alchemy 2 and throwing 2. And that's all of our points. So I'll go ahead and lock that in. Your adventure starts in the dusty shadows of a prison mine many leagues from any trading post or settlement. The second chance, as in your second chance to become a productive member of society, is the most feared of all hard labor and gladiator camp prisons. Once the jewel in a string of rich iron mines, the shafts were long ago exhausted and the ore spent. No longer profitable using conventional slave labor, the prisoners, I mean, it's gotta be pretty rough if you're not making a profit using slave labor, like you're not paying these people. So, yeah, it's, it's gotta be pretty rough out there. Uh, the prisoners who work it now trade whatever ore they can scratch from the rock for scraps of food. Having already tested the futility of fighting the guards, you do not resist when you are hurled into a cage suspended above the main shaft. The bar door crushes or crashes shut. The crack of a whip signals a pair of slaves to the crank, and the cage begins its slow and creaking descent. A one-way trip to hell awaits, past the bright fires, screaming faces, and beyond, into the impenetrable blackness of the lower levels. That's all they sent, says one of the men, asking nobody in particular. I asked for five men. Five? How am I supposed to keep the ore coming if they don't give me enough men to clear the tunnels? Who are you? I'm Barka, and this is my kingdom, which makes you my loyal subject. Uh, what is this place? It's an old mine. The ore is all but gone, but you can still scrape enough to buy yourself a bowl of rat stew. Yeah, wince all you want, but it's the only meat you'll ever have here. I don't see any guards. Why would you? The guards have no reason or desire to be here. Once a day, the guards trade food for ore. No ore, no food. Ore goes up, food trickles down. Uh, what kind of ore? Iron, says Barka. Now, I know what you're thinking. Forge enough weapons to fight our way out of this hellhole. Forget about it. They'll starve us out before we can do anything. They? The guards, the bigger gangs, fucking emperor. What do you care? Uh, you're here, so make yourself useful if you want to live. Uh, what do you want me to do? Some of my men are refusing to work. We sent less ore upstairs, we get less food. We get less food, we get more unhappy workers. You see the problem? Yeah, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like a... Yeah. Uh, you see the problem? Uh, show me what you're capable of, and then we'll talk some more. Marcus, go with him, see what he's made of. A rough-looking man steps forward. He's wearing an old leather apron, serving as armor, and carrying a stone hammer. I'm gonna need some weapons. See a store anywhere? asks Barka. I'll give you a weapon, but you'll have to make your own armor if you live that long. He opens a large wooden chest and looks inside. What do you favor? So they actually give you a choice here. I'm going to take the sword, obviously, because that's what I spec'd into. But I guess if you wanted to choose something that you didn't spec into, you could choose something else. In um, Age of Decadence, they just give you whatever your primary weapon skill is. Barka gives you a makeshift weapon of your choice and a barrel lid. Makes a decent shield if you need one. Go ahead and follow Marcus. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff equipped. So uh, this is our character here, and this is the inventory screen. Um, I really, really like games where the equipment shows up on the character, and in this game it does. 
so that's a nice touch. Um, we'll put this sword in our main hand and the barrel lid in our off hand, and there we go. A little bit of sword and board there, almost literally, because this is like a like a wooden plank thing slapped together to put on top of a barrel. Uh, right, so we just go ahead and move on down the iron shaft with or the mine shaft with the right click, and inter interact with stuff with the left click. Um, there's people over here that we can talk to, but I think we have to go deal with some stuff first. So let's go exploring a bit. I, I've done a little bit of this already. So I think we head on into here. I warned you, Marcus, didn't I? This is one of the prisoners raising a pickaxe. Yet you're here again, this time with new fish in tow. Think it's going to make a difference? Okay, we're fighting, right? Okay, so first things first, we get to deploy. Um, I'm going to put myself in front of this guy, and then I'm going to have Marcus go over here, and then uh, I'll have him face that guy. So one thing I've noticed is the game says you can click on the Start Combat button. I don't think there is one. Um, I'm pretty sure this is holdover from Age of Decadence, where there is a Start Combat button. Unless it's this, but uh, I, have, I have found that you can just press Spacebar and it works, but... I, maybe this is it. Okay, it is. Um, in Age of Decadence, it's labeled differently. But yeah, I, I just hit spacebar because that's the same same function. So, um, right, we're going to go first here. I'm going to move in to engage this guy. And so this works on an AP system. Um, I have 7 AP because I'm, you know, more defensive than offensive. And uh, you've got various different types of attacks. If you right click, you can see all the different options. Um, you can aim at different parts of the character, but everything you do more precisely, so like if you're aiming for an artery or the head, it's going to make your attack less likely to hit. So minus 25 power attacks are minus 15, regular attacks are um, just, you know, no, no penalty. And then if you do a fast attack, you actually get a bonus. And so I find with characters that aren't very well specced offensively, you're better off just spamming out fast attacks because they're low on AP and you get a lot of them. So I can basically take, well, on this turn because I moved, I can only take one. So I may as well use all five, right? Let's go for an artery strike, make him bleed a little. 11% chance to hit, maybe that's a bad idea. Also, you can cycle through these by left clicking. But uh, if you right click, you can just bring up the whole menu. What if we did like a leg strike? That's a little bit better. Let's try to take his legs out. So he dodged it. We'll go ahead and end our turn. We're going to block his, ooh, we blocked one and then we blocked a little bit of the other and then this guy's gonna run in so um hold on I'll try to land another hit so you guys can see no point in fast attacking with that one let's do a regular attack so the number outside of the shield is the amount of damage it gets through the number inside the shield is the amount that gets absorbed by the shield or armor so the number inside the shield is being subtracted from the overall hit basically uh, and the number outside is the amount of damage actually done so if you put those together, that's the total damage you hit for. So that hit for just straight up 10 and all of it got through. And our block skill's coming in pretty handy there. This guy's also pretty uh, pretty slippery. Look at him. Doesn't even need a shield. Nice. We should put this guy down pretty quick here. Oh, he blocked it. One more hit and he's going down, though. Um, I am just going to spam out some fast attacks here. Let's see, 51. That's a lot better. But yeah, we're not very good on offense. Looks like we managed to block all that there. Oh, she finally got got him with a rock there. Okay. Take two more swings here. There he goes. We'll step in here, and unfortunately, he can't attack because he doesn't have anything. He's got a big, you know, he <clears throat> excuse me, a big heavy warhammer. So it's going to take him more AP to, to uh, wield it. And, uh,. 3 is not going to be enough for him to attack. But because he's using a two-handed weapon, he can attack on diagonals. My character can only attack um, adjacent squares, not diagonal squares. So let's see, 54. There we go, 7 got through. He ducked the other one. Looks like they're going to go right after him. So I'll probably need some sort of like aggro ability. I don't know if there really is anything like that in the game. But... Um, I'm sure there's a way that we can, you know, get them to focus on us. This guy's slippery. Okay. Yeah, counterattack right to the face. So 
So those are based on your skills. Um, you know, you can't trigger them, they just trigger automatically. Nice. Two hits there, and that'll finish him. And we'll start charging her. But yeah, this is, you know, pretty straightforward, you know, classic RPG combat. Nothing really too flashy here. Um, I do like the different, like, hit areas, but that's nothing new either. I've seen other games that do that, much older games. Um, but this game, you know, does make you, like, really work for your damage. Against enemies like this, it's not going to be particularly difficult. But, um, she's trying to get away. For example, if she had, like, really heavy body armor on, but no arm or leg armor, then, you, you know, you would want to target the open areas. Um, it, it's pretty intuitive that way. You just have to sort of pay attention to what you're doing. Damn it. She's going to get away again. Um, I'm really making this difficult. There we go. Okay. And that's the end of the combat. You did well, says Marcus, handing you a foul-smelling salve for your wounds. But we ain't done yet. Do you need some time to catch your breath? I'm good. Alright, so you can actually loot everybody, and it's sort of similar to the Elder Scrolls in you know the way that literally everything that they have is yours now. Um, so every, any armor that they're wearing, any weapons that they're carrying, it's now yours to take. And one nice thing is it'll automatically open up the next person in that area so if there's like three prisoners on the ground for example it'll automatically jump to the next one when you hit take all so you don't have to like run around all of them you can literally just spam take all and you'll get it all we've got a chest over here we'll go ahead and grab that uh they got a key to something some rations which are going to be important oh and a net you can do like some mermillo tactics here uh, so that's where we came in let's maybe venture further in Hold on, I've got to kind of get my bearings here. That door is barred. Interesting. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is where we came from. No, it's not. So we came in this way then. Yeah. Let's go further in then. We have a key now, so we should be able to unlock this. You should heal yourself before the next fight. Oh, yeah, I probably should. So you use rations to heal HP. It's basically one-to-one. -one. So... Just use max. It'll take two rations. We'll heal one HP each. And then in we go. Prisoner. Uh, you see five rough looking prisoners who are clearly no strangers to violence. Former raiders having a hard time adjusting to their new reality. Uh, you've got some fucking nerve, Marcus, growls a bearded man, the leader of his crew. You want my ore that bad? Come and take it. Uh, so we can use our charisma here and maybe talk them out of the fight. But I'm more interested in uh, claiming his head and his armor. So we're just going to fight. In this game and Age of Decadence, though, you're going to want to avoid fights when you can. Um, there are play styles in, I imagine, both of these games where you can avoid fighting entirely. And it's not a bad idea because fighting can be extremely challenging. Um, and if you don't have good speech skills, for example, you can sort of run into dead ends where... You just can't get past it because you can't beat the fight, but you can't talk your way out of it. And so those characters seem to be more effective in these games. I like combat, though, so I try to roll at least somewhere down the middle. Capable of fighting, but not in a total idiot where I can't talk my way out of certain situations. Um, but in this case, you know, we got to lay down the law. So it's going to be... Oh, wow. We're going against five of these guys. Um... I'm going to deploy him straight on, and then, nope, don't do that. Face him. Why aren't you turning around? Face that way. There you go. Right, and then I'm going to send Marcus after one of the crossbowmen to put them down a little bit quicker. We'll see how that works. So I'm immediately going to step in, and we're just doing fast swings. But I'm going to go for, like, a lucky... Let's go for like a lucky headshot, since I have, I have the five. I only get one attack. May as well see if we can get one through. But he's gonna have to hold it down because everybody's gonna be targeting him. So far, so good. All right. Um, let's see here, Marcus. You can just move to there, I guess. Actually, if you move here, that's gonna be another two. May as well. 
I only get one attack either way. Freaking dodged it. Yeah, we gotta pin them against the wall there. Keep blocking, man. Keep blocking. You can do it. This is where having a good tank comes in handy. That's what I like to see. Come on. Get another one through. Oh, wait, you moved. Never mind. <clears throat> Hold it down. It's doing pretty good, actually. Um, unfortunately, I'm attacking people with shields. So this is not gonna really work all that well. But he's just, you know, using delaying tactics, basically. There we go. I'll take that. Yeah, he is like an impenetrable force field or something going on there. Nice. Big hit for 12 there. Oh, that one got through. The heavier weapons tend to do that, but, you know, what are you going to do? Ooh, bleeding. Nice. If he can take out one of these guys on his own, that would be great. Because I'm kind of relying on Marcus to do most of the damage here while he just takes all the hits. Marcus is getting kind of kited along here. Nice. Okay, so Marcus is going to join the fight over here now. Let's see. You were having pretty good sh pretty good luck against this guy, so keep working on that. Um, I like to focus fire in these games. So, you know, obviously the more people you put down, the less people there are to attack you. So I try to kill one guy as soon as possible and then move on to the next guy. Rather than spreading my attacks out. Because, you know, that does wear people down. But at the same time, I would like to take people take as many people out of the fight as soon as I can rather than um, you know wearing everybody down equally because if they focus fire you back then you know you're gonna be in trouble hope that one got through <clears throat> the hammers tend to do that the hammers hit pretty hard oh we almost dropped him there he's bleeding though so I don't even need to worry about him anymore he'll he'll die on his own turn but that one got by yeah, he's going to bleed to death. Let's move in here and start working on this guy. He's got a shield, though, so it's going to be a little bit harder to get some damage on him. I'm actually going to move over so that I can attack this guy, because I've got a much better chance to hit him. I'll let Marcus deal with that guy. All right, so... Oh, it's Marcus's turn. There it is. Nice. Nice. We're going to try to wrap this fight up quick because we are running out of time here. But uh, if you guys enjoy this type of stuff, uh, please feel free to let me know. Um, if you'd like to see Age of Decadence, I'd be happy to do a video on that as well. Um, and if you guys are enjoying these types of games, I'd be happy to do a series. Um, that's you know part of the reason why I do these videos. One, to introduce you guys to a game that you might like. And two, it sort of helps me put stuff out there and see sort of what sticks. Um, you know, if these videos do really well, then I know, oh, I should probably do some more content on that game. <clears throat> Got a crit there, nice. But then, uh, you know, obviously if they don't, then I can sort of say, well, that might not make a great series. But, uh, I enjoy games like this. You know, the, uh, old school RPG is a, a genre that's sort of hit or miss for me. Um, but it, it, when it's properly modernized and it's got elements of like you know turn-based tactical combat in it i enjoy that i don't like games like pillars of eternity i enjoyed but i don't enjoy the combat in games like that at all that's an example of like an old school rpg that doesn't really do it for me but that game was i think good enough to sort of overcome that at least in my for my taste all right so we're gonna finish her off i think no wait, no that's a guy it sounds like a woman when they strike though but yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up. We'll see what kind of loot they drop. I'll, I'll grab the leader's armor and throw it on real quick, and then we'll call this a day. But there's a lot of story to this. Um, Age of Decadence, I can't even... I think I've put, like, 8 to 10 hours into it, and I'm only just scratching, like, the beginning of the story. So, I mean, these games are really, really deep. Um, you know, tons of lore and stuff, but... Uh... Oh, whoops. I keep forgetting it, auto. I was just talking about that too. So we did get his armor. Uh, we got a better shield. Let's grab all this and I'll throw some of it on. You guys can see how that looks. And then we'll end the episode. So we're going to take his leather harness there. And then we'll take the uh, matching leather helmet. 
and why not his shield? Is that actually a real shield? It, they call it a buckler. That look, looks it looks a bit big for a buckler. Um, I think the barrel lid's probably a little bit. No, it's the same size. Is that also a barrel lid? Oh, that's an actual oval shield. There we go. That's what I want. And we can equip Marcus too. He's already got basically the same armor that uh, we have, just in a different color. So I'm gonna give him this like barbarian looking helmet, and uh, I'm gonna give myself a net. But that won't really matter because we are done for the day. Anywho, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Dungeon Rats with you. If you guys would like to see more, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys next time.